in California, I seem to be a pretty good worker compared to all these guys that were surfing and not showing up. So, <laughs> so that part was easy. Uh, but I, and, and again, with martial arts changing my men, men, mentality, I wanted more. I wanted more. I wanted more. And uh, it's, it, I didn't. I didn't have a clue about education and all that stuff. But I, I just had that hunger. Like my my buddy and friend, mentor Les Brown says, "You got to be hungry." And I had it, man. It just I wanted more. And then you know when my girlfriend got pregnant. Uh, had a baby. I, I wanted to provide more for them. And at the same time, I'm working 80 hours a week trying to provide more for them. And you tell yourself, uh, I'm making all these sacrifices for my loved ones. When in reality, it's your loved ones that are being sacrificed because yeah, you need the money, but at the same time, they want you there with them. All righty. Welcome to another episode of Boss Talk with Terry. And today I have my seafood my contracting business coach on the podcast today to drop some of the jewels and gems with you guys that he has been dropping with me for the last year or so. We're just going to say last year or so because it's been longer than that, but we're just going to say the last year or so. Uh, with that, I want to introduce you guys to the contractor's contractor, my main man, Mr. Brian Adams. Brian, how you doing today, brother? Big Terry, man. I've been looking forward to this. Uh, I've been watching you do this going, man. I wonder if he's going to ask me. I'm going to send him something and say, hey, Terry, let me be on that show. Uh, <laughs> hey, before we go, it's like uh, anybody watching this, Terry says Sifu. So that's, uh, that's Chinese for uh, uh, instructor. That's Chinese for uh, teacher. So you hear you hear sensei quite a bit, which is uh, Japanese, but Sifu is... Uh, is Chinese. And when I first heard that 35 years ago when I was in martial arts, I was like, seafood? Uh, uh, seafood? I said, seafood? What kind of seafood? And they're like, no, man, seafood <laughs> popping in the back. <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, and you got to show me your shirt, Terry. Master your business like a ninja. I love that, man. That's right. Uh, that's right. And the, you I know, like, I, I, I got to let like, everybody know that you yeah. are the inspiration for this shirt. I created this shirt based on what you've been teaching me, you know, you always say, master your business, yeah, master, master your, your trade, business. now it's time to master your business. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I and me being, you... being a student of the martial arts as well, you know, yep. the, the ninja part just, you know, it just fell in there. It just fell in there, man. I love it. Because uh, <laughs> like you said, we, we, I don't know, we hooked up, met somehow on the internet almost two years ago, but uh, I don't know, we just had kind of like a, 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 a brother connection immediately, brother from another mother type of thing. And then, like you said, is uh, man, we we've been taking the same parallel paths, you know, just all along, and just finally met each other. But uh, mm -hmm. I'm glad to be here with you, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So you just mentioned about you know 35. Let's let's talk about <clears throat> let's talk about how you got into contracting. You know, got into doing what you're doing. You know, how you became a contractor, and then how you transitioned that into becoming a business coach for contractors. But before we get to that point. Let's talk a little bit more about the man. You know what I mean? Where you grow up, you know, <laughs> you bro how many brothers and sisters you got, you know, all oh, that kind of thing, you know. <laughs> Let's kind of dig back into the, in the into the past a little bit. Yeah, so, uh, and today is, what, the 27th of December, and tomorrow I drop my sister off at the airport. She flies back to uh, Idaho. Uh, two days ago, I dropped my other sister off at the airport. She flew back to Greensboro, North Carolina. We all grew up in North Carolina. Um, Okay. I got two sisters, two brothers, and it was the first time all three of us uh, had been together in 20 years. Uh, we'd seen each other at different times, you know, you know, one on one, but for all three of us to be together, it's the first time in 20 years. So that was kind of special, I guess. Uh, no I told doubt. some people, I said, man, don't, don't buy me anything for Christmas. Save that money. I may need bail money. These, these girls are getting me in trouble. Uh, and <laughs> so, but so I've got two older brothers. Uh, one sister is older than me, but my oldest, oldest brother is uh, the sister that just, that leaves tomorrow. She'll fly to Salt Lake City. From Salt Lake City, she'll take a bus into Idaho. But, uh, and every now and then she'll see our, our my, my other brother who is 60 and lives under the, you know, he lives in the homeless shelter or under the bridge. He holds up the sign, you know, you know, trying to, you know, panhandle, get money when he's not in jail. Uh, my brother that's a, a year younger than him ended up getting knocked in the head at the age of 22, poured in the river like eight days later, buried as a John Doe. Uh, wow. you know, so we, I mean, cause everybody's got a story. That's what I tell people is, is, is just that, uh, 
we grew up in, in you know, my, my mom was in a, a very abusive alcoholic. Uh, dad was never around. When he was around, it looked like a UFC match between them two. Police mm. always showing up. And so uh, we kind of all separated. Like, I think I was out of the house at 14. Uh, you know, my sister was out at the same about, you know, I think at like 13, she was pregnant. And just, you know, we all kind of scattered and, you know, north left North Carolina here, there, and everywhere. And I ended up on a Greyhound to, to California. Uh, my mom and sister had came out here because back in the early 80s, California was the, the welfare state. You could make twice as much money doing nothing as you could in North Carolina. And uh, that was their goal was to see how much they could get from the government. So they were out here and I was uh, kind of just bumming around in North Carolina and figured if I was going to be a bum, I might as well be a bum in Hawaii. And uh, California, <laughs> California was closer to Hawaii than uh, North Carolina, South Carolina. So I jumped on a bus and, and came out here. But luckily, I met a guy that, uh, you know, popped me in the back of the head. I was dating his daughter and, and he was like, dude, you either got to go back to school or learn a trade where you can support yourself and, and, and a family. And, uh, and so I went to work with him in construction and uh, ended up liking it, you know, loving it really it was because at the end of the day, you were sweaty, you were sore, you know, but you had, you know, uh, an okay amount of money, uh, but you felt like you did something. So it gave, you know, gave me a little bit of self-esteem. And at that same time, I went and joined a, uh, a martial arts school. I had joined in North Carolina, but ended up quitting and, you know, I had subconscious or, uh, you know, just programmed myself to believe that I was a quitter because everything I started, I would quit. I would quit. I'd start this and quit. And, you know, during the summer, spring, I'd join baseball team, end up quitting football, fall, I'd, you know, I'd end up quitting. And, you know, I remember once uh, trying out for baseball when uh, one of the coaches, you know, how they pick all the kids that are there. And I was like one of the last kids to be picked and overheard one of the coaches saying, oh, it doesn't matter who picks Brian, you know, he's going to end up quitting. You know, they didn't mean for me to hear it, but and, and it was true. And it wasn't because I would I didn't want to do the sport. It was just, you know, mom, in the afternoons, my mom would drive up drunk and cussing and just to and just, you know, something would always happen to so to save myself that embarrassment, I would just end up quitting. Uh, you know, but you, you know, just consciously, subconsciously, you don't know that. You're just programming yourself over and over again. So I joined karate in North Carolina and again. Three months later, didn't have anywhere to stay, nothing going on, had to get a Greyhound bus to California. So I, again, I had quit. So, man, got into construction, went to this martial arts school, and I'm looking up at the belts on the wall, you know, white, yellow, orange, purple, green, brown, black. And I'm looking up at the belts, and most people look up there going, man, I want to get a black belt. And I'm looking up there and just daydreaming going, I wonder how long I'll be here before I quit. You know, what's going to happen to that, you know? And three months went by, and I didn't quit. I was able to test skip yellow belt. They applied to three months in uh, North Carolina to, to the three months I had out here so added like six months. I was able to skip yellow belt, go to orange belt. And I was like, man, I didn't quit. I didn't quit. So that changed my whole philosophy. I tell everyone that everything I have today, everything I am, I owe to martial arts and, and what it did to me mentally. Uh, and just from that day forward, just gave me a thirst for knowledge that I had never had before. I had to teach myself to read and I just, you know, I, I just wanted more and more and more and trying to find out what made me different than my brothers and sisters and what made I chose different things and, and being in construction um, is I was never afraid to work, uh, you know, growing up in North Carolina during the summer, you had to either, you know, you're picking tobacco or cucumbers or something, but you're working in the fields, saving up money. So uh, when school you know, in, in, in uh, October, September, when you went back to school, you had to work all summer to have that money to go to school shop and get your clothes and all that crap. So uh, in California, I seem to be a pretty good worker compared to all these guys that were surfing and not showing up. So, <laughs> so that part was easy. Uh, but I, and again, with martial arts changing my men, men, mentality, I wanted more, I wanted more, I wanted more. And uh, it's, I, didn't, I didn't have a clue about education and all that stuff, but I, I just had that hunger. Like my, my buddy and friend, mentor Les Brown says, you got to be hungry. And I had it, man. It just, I wanted more. And then, you know, when my girlfriend got pregnant, uh, had a baby, and I, I wanted to provide more for them. And at the same time, I'm working 80 hours a week trying to provide more for them. And you tell yourself, uh, I'm making all these sacrifices for my loved ones. When in reality, it's your loved ones that are being sacrificed because, yeah, you need the money, but at the same time, they want you there with them. Uh, I didn't want to miss none of the dance recitals or any of that stuff. We're five minutes from Disney, so I wanted to be there with them. And I, I just knew, you know, 
you know, what's going on? Other, you know, if this is all there is, I might as well go get a job because I tell people now that if you have to be there, it's not a business, it's a job. And I was lucky enough, I was working for a gentleman and I, I just, you know, I'm just, you know, don't be afraid to embarrass yourself. Ask the questions, ask the questions. And I asked this dude, cause he had like a, back then it was like a $3 million house. Today it's probably 16 million. But I'm like, dude, what, what do you do for a living? How do you get money? What, you know, don't you have to go to, don't you got to go to work? He said, man, I'm working right now. And, and he chuckles. I said, what do you mean you're working now? And he goes, yeah. He said, I have to be there. And, you know, it, it's not a business, it's a job. And that's where I first heard that. And I was like, I don't understand that because, you know, if I'm not here, you know, these two guys I got helping me, I don't know what they'll do. And I got to be here and this and that. <laughs> and, and, and he was like, man, you know, he said, are you, do you really want to know or are you just making conversation? I was like, dude, I really want to know. So he kind of explained what business was and some books. And you know, back then it was cassette tapes, uh, which ones to listen to and how to go to different seminars. I didn't even know seminars existed and training classes that you could go. The only thing I knew that you, you had to go to school. And like whether it was in college or something like that. And he was like, no, man, he's like on weekends and during the week. And like, and, and so he set me straight. And again, I was hungry for that knowledge and I just never quit. And I remember Zig Ziglar saying it was Automobile University. And in this area of Southern California, you spend, you know, an hour, hour and a half in the morning driving to work and three hours in the afternoon driving home. So there was no reason not to listen to all these cassette tapes from Zig Ziglar and Les Brown and, you know, uh, Jim Rohn and all these other guys, these gurus and business people and management and uh, all of it. So and, and then, you know, weekends and stuff, if I wasn't at karate tournaments, I'd be at a seminar somewhere, teach, you know, learning you know, and then applying it. And that's and that was key. And I, and I remember Les telling me it was like, uh, he last told me once, he said, if knowledge was all we needed, you know, nobody would be sick, fat, and broke. And mm. I was like, damn. And he goes, mm. I said, That's I said say it again. I said, say it again, Les. He goes, <laughs> he, said, he said, honest, Brian. He said, if, if knowledge was all we needed, nobody would be sick, fat, and broke. And when I met Les, and we spent, I don't know, well, years, 20 years now, but uh, it was 2001, 2002. The internet was just starting to really work uh to where you could find what you were looking for youtube none of that crap was around yet but he was like man you, you can get online there's t there's my books there's jim Rohn's books there's uh think and grow rich all the books the knowledge is there uh and now this internet thing is coming around it's going to make it even easier the knowledge has always been there it's it, so it's not the knowledge if, if that's all we needed you know everybody would be you know rich and thin and happy yeah, but there, there's something else and you got to take that action. You've got to apply what you, what you learn. And uh, I had did that during my business because I didn't want to spend 80 hours a week uh, away from my family just to make money to support my family. I mean, it's like, what, what, you know, there, there's gotta be some kind of balance. There's gotta be something. Why are you working? And then when you start learning the business traits of, of how, you know, a guy told me years ago that you can only make so much money using these two hands. You've got to hire 10 more guys. So you've got, tw you know, 20 hands and 40 hands, 80 hands and have all of those guys. And Zig Ziglar says it better than anyone. You can have anything in this life that you want as long as you help enough other people get what they want. So the more people exactly. that even with even with the electricity, you know, it's like whether you're you know, installing lights or air conditions or doing it doesn't matter. Whatever it is that you're doing, the more people that you can help, the more money you're going to get compensated for that. And you can't be everywhere at once. Just train these guys and treat them right and teach them how to do your system. And so that, you know, that it's going to get done correctly and that you, your name is on it. So people are trusting you. They're going to, you know, they're trusting you is you can have two guys, four guys, 40 guys, different cities. You can, you know, it's like the sky is the limit at that time. Uh, it it, it kind of, what you just said, it reminds me of the, this job I just finished doing this home theater for this guy, you know, we uh, wired his base, his whole basement, Mm -hmm. And you know, we put put his home office in there. He put a complete home gym. That gym looks like anything Planet Fitness. Wow, any yeah. <laughs> one of those type of gyms. I mean, his it rivals it. I mean, mm -hmm. for the equipment and everything goes. And I just posted a video on on, on Facebook uh, showing his re, you know his giving him giving giving me his testimonial. Oh, the, yeah, did he give you the yeah, I seen that. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, I love and, that. You know, those are the type of jobs and the type of experiences that I like to, to provide, you know, my clientele. 
but if I'm the one that has to do it all the time, yeah, you know, it's not scalable. No, you know what I mean. That's not. I'm not scalable. You can. Yeah. You can't scale human beings. No. Nope. <laughs> as much as I'd love to clone myself, <laughs> you know, yep. I, it's just not possible. But yeah, man, that thing you was talking about, mm -hmm. uh, you know, making sacrifices for your family and your family mm -hmm. ended up being sacrificed. The first yeah. time I heard you said that, it dropped on my head like a ton of bricks. I was yeah. like, wow, that is so profound. But you know what? Guilty as charged. Yeah, yeah. And we all are at one point or another. And so the business, you know, I just started doing this stuff and uh, it worked. So I wasn't really even paying attention to it anymore. But, you know, my contract and other buddies were, they're like, dude, what the hell? You know, every time I talk to you, you're at Disney. You know, it's like three days a week, you're at Disney or whatever. You know, it's like this and that. Or you're on vacation with your, your relatives. They come down. And we used to do this like, yeah, I call it the Brian Adams uh, Olympic the vacations. But they'd come out from North Carolina. And I'd take them to, uh, you know, the Hollywood, the uh, uh, group of the observatory and uh, run them down to Mexico. We drive out to Vegas. I mean, it was seven days. They, they'd see more in seven days than they most people see in a lifetime. And, and, and the company was kind of running itself. And these guys were like asking, man, what are you doing? What are you doing? And like, and you, I'm like, I don't know, man, I can't tell you five years of, of books and, and cassette tapes and seminars and trainings that I've been to. It's like, I, I can't give you that in a, a coffee conversation. It's like, I can only do for you what this guy did for me and, and set you on the path. And it's up to you to follow through, you know, but over the time, you know, I'd say, well, you got to do this. And they do that. And they call me up. And so I, I started coaching them way back in 93, 95, uh, and, and they were getting success and, and I was happy about it. But at the karate studio, you know, everybody would come in or the parents would say, hey, talk to little Johnny. He's doing this or some guy would be doing something. And everybody had an excuse and they would try to lay it on me as the seafood. It was like, man, well, you don't understand. I did this. And I say, oh, oh, oh. I said, man, trust me, you don't understand. I said, no, I said, before I grew up, how I grew up, if I can do something different, you can do something different. It's the choices you're making daily. And uh it, it, so he's like, S sit down, let me tell you a story. And then you almost embarrass them telling them how you grew up and what you went through. And then like, you know, they're scratching their head going, damn, I, 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 you know, I did this little, I asked the wrong person to come to my pity party. And so, <laughs> it's, it's just like, it, it ain't happening. Uh, and it was the same way in business. It's like, it's, it's as long as you know, you're 100% in control and take responsibility for it. Uh, even when your guys, your, your employees are screwing up, I ask guys all the time, it's like, yeah, like, let me see your training manual. Let me see how you're doing this. Well, I don't have this. I don't have like, then, then, you know, then you're setting yourself up for failure. You know, you mm -hmm. just, uh, and there's little systems to everything. And in the beginning, it's kind of hard to put it together. Uh, but man, once you get it going, it, it, you only have to do it once. And then you kind of just, you don't have to recreate the wheel. It's already been done. You can just change it around to fit your company and your business and all of it. And the better you treat your employees. I remember years ago, I seen that sign that people used to hang on the wall saying, rule number one, the customer is always right. Rule number two, when the customer is wrong, see rule number one. I'm like, man, that's a bunch of bullshit. If the customer... <laughs> I, mean, if, if I used customer, to believe that. Yeah, man. If the customer knows more about your trade than you do, you probably shouldn't be doing it. Exactly. It's our, it's our job to educate them and keep and, and keep them from hurting themselves. <laughs> These guys go to Home Depot. I see them in the rental department at Home Depot, and I'm going, oh, man, somebody stop him. <laughs> and really, for you, man, electric, I don't, my wife will let me touch electric shit. I'm like, honey, I've been in construction 35 years. You ain't been doing electric. <laughs> the lights are flickering. <laughs> don't touch that shit. <laughs> And I've had, I've, I've texted you, I've called you, I've said, hey man, what's going on here? What did I do? The LED? Yep. What's, this, what's that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Was that? You can screw some shit up with electric. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, big time, big time, big time. So, what type? Of, let's talk about the type of business that you're that you do, and and how did you get into finishing floors? Because yeah. that's that's a that's a very interesting trade. That's a highly skilled trade. And yeah. uh, it's just so, like I don't know anybody that says, you know what, I want to, I want to finish floors when I grow up. You know what I yeah. mean? It's, it, how it, did it, you it, get into it? And, and and it is, it's like uh, uh, I was working at this place called Kenny Shoes. Uh, I don't even think they exist anymore. But I was really good at it. 
I sold a lot of shoes, Terry. And I think most of it was because nobody out here could understand me. My country hick accent was so bad. They felt bad. I mean, I, I must have sounded like, you know, I was off the, the short bus, you know, wearing the helmet, licking the windows. Uh, but I sold a lot of shoes, man. <laughs> and uh, so across this, I was in the mall. So across the store, there was a girl and I started dating her. And her dad is the guy who did hardwood flooring, all aspects of it. And he's the one who said, either go back to school or learn a trade where you can support yourself. And he's the one who's told me, hey, don't, you know, we were engaged. And he said, you, you can't marry my daughter. He goes, uh, she's a little nuts, but both of you are way too young. And if you get married, it's not going to last more than three years. And so I listened to him because he had been right about so many other things. Uh, she's been married four times now, and we're still friends. Uh, with all of us. Uh, he passed away years ago, but, uh, you know, I'm still part of the family, I guess. But so I got into it from him. And back then, early 80, 1982 and stuff here in California, uh, some old guys that I was working around in their late 60s, early 70s, they were part of the War II generation. And I mean, tough as nails, that type of thing. They tell me about stories of John Wayne when he'd worked They'd work down the street from him, but they had told me, said, man, if you learn this trade, you can work anywhere in the world, learn how to do this and that. And it was, a, uh, it was, it was hard, and, and it's, it, but your body adapts to it. But at the end of the day, you know, you were able to take something that was super ugly or just messed up and you were able to, to make it brand new again, make it, and you felt good about it. It's like a kid, and, and I know you know, it's like when you cut the grass in the summer, man, you smell that grass, you can see where the lawnmower went, and it just, you could tell you did something. And that's what wood flooring was. And we do all aspects of it. If it's, and I tell people, if it's wood you walk on, I've done it. I've helped other companies do it, whether it's, we, I've done art deco stuff with square pegs and, and bow tie pegs, and we've taken castles, uh, in France and taking pictures and learned about it, brought it here and we'd mimic it in these other homes in Beverly Hills. I've been fortunate to work for, you know, some really high clientele, uh, sports figures, movie stars, that kind of stuff. Uh, so wow. all aspects of it. And, and, but that part too, Terry was, uh, as much as I enjoyed and I'm glad I did it, I don't do it anymore because that's not where the profit is. For me, it's all about the profit. I'm like, feed the bank account, not the ego. I used to do all that stuff that was like, you. at the end of the day, you get to go, man, look what I did. It's like, oh, how much money did you make? Well, not that much, but look at that. And I was like, dude, feed the bank account, not the ego. You ain't out here. I mean, if, this, if you're doing it just because it's a hobby and you don't need no money, God bless you. But, but, you know, I got kids looking at me like, hey, we don't care about that damn floor. Where's the money? <laughs> we, yeah. like, we, we need the money. We need the money. Uh, and, Zig, and, and again, I say Zig a lot, but, you know, Zig Ziglar would say uh, money's not the most important thing in the world, but it's up there with oxygen. And someone who lies and says money's not important, they'll lie about other things. So yeah. I, I got into it from him. But again, it's like uh, I enjoyed it so much that I really you know, like learned it and, and worked with all these different guys when he wasn't busy I'd call up so and so and I'd go work for them it's like I was never out of work and I was always trying to learn from different individuals who knew how to do something better to where you know like and again that's why you know the whole premise of, of the book that I ended up writing was you've mastered your trade I had mastered that but I didn't have a clue about business and that was the most important I think that's probably why you and I click so 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 well because I was in the same boat 22 years ago. Yeah. You know, I got my license. Oh, yeah, I'm a master electrician. <laughs> and little did I know, I wasn't quite that much of a master yet. Yeah. But even, even now with 34 years in, um, I still got a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. and, and as far as business goes, you know, like I said, 22 years ago, I started my first electrical uh, business. Man, I'm st I'm still learning so much about business. It's ridiculous because yeah. there's so many facets, so many different areas of business that you can focus on to grow and 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 thrive in business. You know, mm -hmm. and you and I was talking earlier before we started this. The you know the recording was, you know, those four ways to grow a business. There's only only four ways to grow a business: get more leads, get more sales, get more you know, money per transaction and get more transactions per customer. Yeah. And right now I'm going on a deep dive into each of those four levels, like, like super deep. Yeah. So, you know, and, and, and what that, what that does is not only does that allow me to grow my business, you know, uh, extremely 
quickly and, and efficiently, it also allows me to help others yeah. do the same thing. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah man, that's... That's, and, and that's what you're doing cool. is like, uh, and, and, and you're working with other contractors and you're teaching them what you're knowing. And that's the best way for you to even master that part of it. Uh, you know, even in the, in the karate studio, you, you, you teach a guy a technique or, or, or a kata or whatever. You teach him some aspect of, of martial arts, you know, just enough. And then you go have him teach three or four other students because that's when he really, the, the, the synopsis in the brain, really, the wiring really starts to connect because he'll be trying to explain it to them and teach it to them. And they'll ask him questions and he'll have to think about it and meditate and really figure it out. And if he can't figure it out, he'll have to come back and ask and then go, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And then go back and, and finish teaching it. But just to do it over and over again, is, is just one part of it. When you start teaching it to other people, it's when you really learn it and really master it and really just, I don't know, you just, you have to, like you just said, dive deep to explain it to other people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you know, you're talking to the world's first, second degree yellow belt. <laughs> right? And we'll get you butt back in the studio then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been a long time since I've been into a dojang, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But um, yeah, you yeah. know, and my 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 uh martial art is Taekwondo, so yeah, that's why you know some people say dojo in yeah. that, you know in, in Korean it's dojang. Yeah, and, you know, I like to kind of break this stuff down sometimes for people because people just lump everything into one. Yeah. You know, it's like like when I, you know, me calling you Sifu instead of saying Sensei, yeah. you know, in Taekwondo, it would be Samanim. Yeah, you know, okay, Korean. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But it, uh, again, it goes, it goes into getting yeah. into these different cultural things, get into the different aspects of life, having these different experiences and bringing all of that stuff together Yeah. to become the person that you are yeah. to present to the rest of the world. You yeah, exactly. I mean? and that's my approach to business. Yeah, you know what I mean. This is me, like it or leave, you know, like love it or leave it. Yeah, you know what I mean. And that, when it comes to my clientele, I'm very selective about who I work with today. Yeah, you know, who I choose yeah. clientele today because I get to pick and choose who I who I work with today. Yeah, notice I didn't say work for. I no, say work with. Work with exactly. you know what I mean because yeah. it's just about my. It's it's just a different mindset. Yeah, you know, and and, and I'm at a point now where. <clears throat> I've shared this in a couple other videos where when it comes to my pricing, I hardly get any pushback. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and this is for those who are watching, this is not me bragging. Mm -hmm. This is something I have worked towards for the last 22 years in business, going through the trenches, going through the trials and the tribulations, stumbling, fumbling, bumbling, you know, knocking my head against the wall, falling down, getting back up to, you know, to a, you get to a point to where you finally start to get a clue. And then when the light bulb comes on, it's like you look up and 20 years has passed. You, yeah. know? <laughs> you know what I mean? And you're like, whoa, I wish I'd known this way back when. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, man, it's, it's and then Because uh, I'm, I'm glad you just mentioned that because uh, I'm in a lot of different, you know, construction groups and stuff. And it seems to be one of the questions I see almost daily in different, all different groups. Doesn't matter if it's roofing or flooring or painting groups and stuff. It's like, you know, everybody's asking, hey, what do you guys charge for this? Hey, what do you charge for that? What do you charge for that? And I'm telling them, it's like, you, like, another electrician can't charge what you charge because they're not you. It's like they don't have the reputation that you've got. They're not, is all of that stuff. I'm like, you can't charge what someone else is charging. You don't have the rep internet reputation. You don't have the, the skill set. You don't have the, 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 the knowledge, how you present it. I mean, there's a whole bunch that goes into it. Uh, I, that question bugs me to death. And it, and, it, and it varies from city to city, country to country, state to state, all of that stuff too. But you're able to, like you said, you get to pick is because when people if someone heard this right now they're like oh i want to be like what terry does right now what he's talking about it's like they can do that once they've been 10 to 20 years through the trenches like you've been through you know mm -hmm. because people see you online whether it's facebook or the videos that you're doing when when you show up to their house they almost looking at you like you're one of those uh home makeover celebrities to, uh, to, <laughs> to where they are when you show up they already trust you they already know you they're you're already a friend uh, and it, and it kills me. Some of this, some of the uh, pictures that you post of that good eating you're, that you're doing over there. Some of the ribs and the collard greens and the cornbread. I'm like, God dang, I, that's enough reason for me to get over there right now. Uh, but 
that's the whole thing. Is like they can't charge what you're charging because they haven't done what you've done. True. True. Yeah. And, True. But and, and that's what you're doing, teaching them and coaching them and helping and, 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 and getting them to there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly that's it. That's it in a nutshell, man. You know, you know, bring that shine back to the trades. You yeah. know what I mean, because there was a time when 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 you were a skilled tradesman, people looked at you a certain way and held you in a certain regard. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm not going to get it, it to the politics of it or whatever. But, you know, yeah. the school system has done quite a number on really tarnishing the skill trades yeah. by pushing everybody straight to college. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? But uh, like I said, that's another rabbit hole we can go down. Yeah. You know, well, it is. I mean, they, they, to where they almost look down at you. Oh, you're in construction. Oh, second, but, uh, second class yeah. citizen all the way. What? But, yeah, like, <laughs> but when they need something fixed, yeah. when they can't figure out who they going to call. Exactly. They ain't you know? calling Ghostbusters. Nope. <laughs> they call him Terry. <laughs> they call him Brian. <laughs> and uh, I'm laughing all the way to the bank. Uh, exactly. To where... A lot of these jobs can get taken over by uh, robots, but what we do, I don't see that ever happening. No, uh, it ain't happening. The, re the remodels, the everything. You, I know you go in and you got, there's certain problems that people have with electric, whether it's a short or this or that, and you got to trace it back to wherever, what's going on. Uh, mm -hmm. No robots or other things, you know, that's, that's hands-on. You could teach someone to do that, but, you know, someone needs to be there to do it. Exactly, exactly. I mean, do you do, uh, do you, do you set up any of like around here, you know, uh, everybody's got Teslas. Um, and, and so when you get the Tesla, somebody has got to come out there and, and, and put that plug in for them. Do you do anything like that yet over in uh, Atlanta? Yeah, I do. I do. I do car charges. Matter of fact, when we wire houses now, um, yeah. all new construction, which I don't do much of, it's only custom. Yeah. You know, I only do custom work, but, um, uh, uh, and then by the national electrical code, we have to put, uh, plugs in the in the garages for car chargers now. For it's car by chargers. code. Okay. Yeah. So, but yeah, I do I do the car chargers. I've, yeah. I've been doing those things. Man, I go back four, three, four years ago. Yeah. When I yeah. first started doing them. Yeah. At least three years ago. No, it's yeah. been longer than that. Four, and that's what I'm saying is like only ago. And like yeah, you said, four the five new years ago, I started doing them. Yeah, the new construction may have them, but all these old homes, they don't have them, you know. Yeah, they don't have them. So, yeah, like like I said, like about four or five years ago, I started getting calls to do car charges. Yeah. And um, I've done I've done a few. And like yeah. I said, the last home, last couple of homes that we've done, uh, custom custom homes that we've done on new construction, we've done them, uh, and uh, the renovations that we've done. Like I said, I'm, I'm getting out of the, the you know, the, the construction part of it per yeah. se, but... Like I said, I'll take on certain projects. Like I said, we're doing a, we, we're doing a custom built 5,000 square foot home right now. Mm. This thing is taking forever because it's custom built. I mean, yeah. everything, everything is custom in this house. Wow. So, you know, and um, on the commercial side, I had let commercial go, but I got a, I got a friend who is a, a music producer who's building his own studio. So I'm doing that. Yeah. So I've done. I'm done. I've done his. I've done his temporary studio in his basement at his home until this, this, this. You know, the big studio gets done. Yeah. I've done a lot of stuff with this particular guy and uh, and two of his homes now. Mm -hmm. And like I said, these are the kind of clientele that I cultivate relationships with. Yeah. Which is, it's so key in business, you know. And I see a lot of guys online that complain and cry and bitch about the customers. And, you know, it's like, well, you know, you're the one that's going out here and picking these people. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to work no, for them. Yeah, nobody told you to have to get here, have to go over there. Yeah, yeah you don't have to work for them. I mean, no. you know, every, you know, you need, I, I get it. You need money. You need, you yeah. know, that money needs to come in. But see, here's the thing. You get to design your business how you want your business to be. Yeah. Nobody gets to tell you how to run your business. Yeah. You get to do that. Yeah. And when that clicked in my mind, everything changed. Yeah. And I mean, everything from because I used to be one of those uh, at, at a, in a race to the bottom with the lowest price, mm. the mm. going rate. And then what's the going rate? OK, well, I need to be a few dollars under the going rate so I could get the job. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. For many years. Yeah. You know, and like I said, that's that part of that going through the trenches and. And, and, and just learning that, you know, there's a better way. Yeah. 
Well, for years, I've told, you know, I, even now, I'll start, I'll, I'll start off a, uh, a seminar or a training, and I'll tell people, it's like, a, the best thing about working for yourself and owning your own business is, is you get paid exactly what you're worth. And I let that sink in. I say, you know, the worst thing about owning your own business and working for yourself is you get paid exactly what you're worth. And so, you know, yep. it, it, it all is up to you. It's, it's, yep. you, know, you nobody's holding the keys but you. You get to, to, de to determine what that worth is. Exactly. You know, yeah. and my thing is, I, I don't know who said it first, but I love this. When you learn to sell your value, you mm. never have to compete on price again. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm like, y'all can be in that race to the bottom all you want. I'm out of that rat race. Yeah. Because there's, there's, al there's always going to be someone that'll do it cheaper. Always. 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 And I, I tell everybody, you get what you pay for. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's another, you know, you get what you pay for. So if you want cheat, here's the thing. If you're cheap, nobody expects you to be the best. Mm -hmm. Nobody believes that you're the best. Yeah. And if you're the best, nobody expects you to be cheap. Yeah. So guess what I choose to be? I choose to be the best. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that is relative to the receiver of my services. Yeah. If they feel like I'm the best, that's all that matters. Yeah. I don't care what nobody else thinks. Because if they, and like you said, what you want to do, you uh, uh, build your ego or build your bank account. Exactly. <laughs> and, and when you're working for people and they hired you because you're the cheapest and if, you know, and you're like, oh, I'm building my business on refers. They're referring you to people who think you're the cheapest. And so, so everybody that calls you is like, hey, man, I heard you did so-and-so's house. This can you, can you give me a deal? I was like, damn, I did. I already gave him a deal. You went less than what I gave yeah. him. But, but they're, they're, they're hanging out and they're telling people, hey, man, call this guy up. He's cheap. Call this guy up. He's cheap. I learned that the hard way. I got caught up into that. And I was like, yeah. oh, my goodness. I was like, I was getting, yeah, because my business survived on referrals. Yeah. And, but, again, like you said, you got people saying, hey, yeah, call Terry. Yeah, you know, he does a great job and he's cheap. And he's cheap, and, yeah. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, oh, my goodness. Because I'm yeah. like, I'm going over here on this referral. And then I give him a price. And they're like, well, you know, so-and-so and so-and-so. And so. I'm like, yep. yeah, okay. Yeah. This, yeah I can't. Because cheap, cheap, cheap people hanging around cheap people. <laughs> Birds of a feather. That's it, man. That, that's who. That's who's calling you. I'm like, man, don't don't refer me to anybody else, please. I can't so afford let's, it. Let's talk a little bit about this whole this this mental martial arts thing. I know you. I want to get into a little bit into the martial arts that you do itself. Um, but let's talk about the mental martial arts because I think that's that's something that's really important, especially but, yeah, for those uh, out here in the trades. And it is, and it's um. And it's really what you're talking about right now. It's 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 how you hold yourself to a higher standard. Uh, if, if if you're doing it for a cheaper price, it's because that's how you value yourself. Uh, and it's all you know mental. Uh, you know the toughest golf course you'll ever play is the six inches between your ear. Mm. It's, it, it, it's it's just you know everything. It's 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 all that self esteem. And there's no such thing as a as, as a fake self esteem. That whole fake it till you make it. That's that's more bullshit that we've been sold. And the whole positive affirmations, uh, you know, stand in the mirror and tell yourself, I'm great, I'm great, I'm great, you know, and subconsciously, you know, you're lying. And it's like, oh, he lies about that. He'll lie about other things to where, you know, you can say, I'm, you know, I'm the number one electrician in, in uh, Atlanta. I'm the number one. It's like, but you know, you're lying. All you're doing is reinforcing that lie. And, and, and now you got your brain, you know, battling back and forth to where if you're honest going, you know, I'm number three right now and I'm going to get to number one. Here's how I'm going to do it. Or I'm 300 pounds, but I want to get down to 150 and not, I'm, I'm healthy, happy and fit, healthy, happy and fit. Saying that shit over and over again, looking in the mirror at yourself, all it is is reinferring, you know, a, a lie over and over again. So affirmations work, but only when you're honest with yourself. Um, but the whole mental martial art thing came about because of uh, uh, teaching martial arts and, and students, whether it's kids or adults, you know, coming to me with outside of the studio, you know, inside the studio, they're doing great, you know, getting their, you know, learning their techniques and all that stuff, going from yellow belt, green belt, brown belt, black belt in, in the studio, you know, they're knocking it out of the park outside the studio. Their life is in shambles, you know, can't hold a job, can't make the money, fighting with the kids, the wife, all that stuff. And when I'm asking them, hey, man, what the hell's going on? Well, everybody's got an excuse. And I'm like, whoa, man. It's like, no, that's exactly what it is. It's an excuse. So I put together a program years ago, probably 98, uh, called Mental Martial Arts. Defend yourself against your toughest opponent, you. 
because that's what it is. You know, I'm teaching these guys self-defense in the studio and uh, most of them will never, ever get in a fight ever. Uh, and that goes to mental part of it also. But, you know, outside of high school, we don't get in a lot of confrontations, maybe one or two. But most important for me was I needed to teach them that mental part going, hey, man, it's like anything that you're doing here in the studio, these same principles you can apply to any area outside of your life. And uh, it's, it's going to work the same way because certain principles work the same way over and over again. It's just a law of the universe. And then at that same time, I'm asking myself, why am I different than my brothers and sisters? Why do I make different choices? What's going on inside the brain? Uh, my sister that I'm dropping off tomorrow at the age of seven, uh, all of us were in the car, all five kids, my mom and my mom's uh, girlfriend. They were drunk as skunk leaving High Point, North Carolina, heading to Greensboro because that's where the ABC store was, uh, alcohol beverage control. Uh, and they went there, bought more alcohol, just drunk as all could be, hit a railroad track, flipped over several times, and uh, my wow. sister should have died. Uh, she was never supposed to walk or talk again, but she did. She made almost, she made a good 80% recovery, but the whole left side of her brain is complete dead mass. So she only has like half a brain. And to look at her and see everything that she's accomplished over the years is you, you'd never, ever know. So even that threw a monkey wrench into like what's going on in the brain. So I just started, you know, really studying the brain, the synopsis, the hippocampus and all this other stuff, how we form habits and break habits and memories and all this other stuff. So uh, I dove deep into it for like 20 years and the whole health and fitness part of it and put it all together for the whole mental martial arts. And it really comes down to you know, we always hear like, uh, uh, as a man thinketh by James Allen, which is such a great book, but it's, we think in pictures. Uh, so every time if I said to you, you know, Mike is riding his bicycle down the street in front of his house. I said, man, think about that, Terry. Mike is riding his bicycle down the street in front of his house. You're picturing what Mike is. Maybe it's, maybe you know someone named Mike and he's on his bike or it's you on your bike in front of your house or something, but you've got to picture a house, the street, all of that stuff, because the brain has to know what, you know, they have to put a picture to these words and those pictures slowly turn into movies. Uh, but if I told you something, if I said, man, I got a trial bite the other day, I, I got it for $200. Usually it's 2000. I'll sell it to you for 1500. You're going to make a lot of money. You, you want to buy this trial bite. And unless you know what a trial bite is, the brain is going, the hell is he talking about? You can't put a picture to it. You know, but if I tell you a trilobite is the oldest fossil known to man. So now you think fossil, you go back to seventh grade, maybe you learned about dinosaurs and fossils. I said, you know, fossil, you know, so a trilobite is the oldest fossil known to man. And when you see one, it kind of looks like a cockroach laying on its back with the legs up in the air. But now I've, I've gave you enough pictures, fossil, roach on its back even though you don't want to picture that it's a word you know yeah i can picture that brian and no i don't want to buy it i don't care how much it is you know but you've <laughs> got to have those uh those pictures so so the words that you're saying to someone has to have those pictures uh in their brain because we, we so we think in pictures everything starts out as a thought first and from those pictures those thoughts uh, that's what triggers our emotions and from our emotions is what makes us take action and from our actions, what gives us our results. So nothing happens until you do something. You know, uh, the Amish have a great saying, it's like, move your feet as you pray, and which is like, instead of just praying, do something, you know. Uh, it, it to, so it's all of that. You think of the pictures from those thoughts, we get our emotions, our emotions make us take actions, our actions give us our results. So if you're thinking the results, you're, you're doing something, you're not getting the result you want, you go back to right here, you say, oh, I better take a different action. And, and you, you, you fight back and forth, but you need to back it all the way up to that thought process, those pictures and that movie that you're playing in your head over and over again. Uh, so you got to go very back to the beginning. So that's, you know, we do like a whole two day seminar with it. Uh, and, and I've done programs for Blue Cross Blue Shield, for Ford, NASA. Uh, it's, 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 that's how I met Les Brown. Uh, Zig Ziglar, Jim Rohn, those guys. It, 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 it was fun. When I sold my first construction company in 2001, I sold everything, wrote some books, and just traveled for like almost five years, you know, doing these seminars, uh, whether it was an hour-long keynote or a two-day training. And, uh, it's, and everything is that. Everything starts with the mental. Because, you know, I'm telling guys, it's like, man, I can teach you. They show, hey, man, teach me the business. I was like, I can do, all, I can give you all the business knowledge. And, and again, it goes back to what Les said. If knowledge was all you needed, everybody would be, you know, 
thin, rich, and happy. It's like, I can give you that knowledge, but unless you change in your mind, unless you change your thought process and take different actions, none of what I teach you is going to make a difference. And they, and that's hard for people to grasp. And, and we all grasp it at different times, whether it was, you know, it was like, and, 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 and one of the first, I had to teach myself to read. So, uh, one of the first books I read, and I, I love this book for a long time and still do, but it was it was called uh, uh, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. It's all small stuff. And it was like every page was like one sentence uh, or every now and then it'd be like a paragraph. And so I would read that and one sentence made sense to me. I could think about it. And then a paragraph or it'd be two or three sentences, but it'd be a comma. So I knew to slow down or this. But so I read it over and over again. But now I teach people is like, as much as I love that book, I tell them the only thing you should sweat is the small stuff, because those are the th those are the things that distract us from what we really need to be doing to achieve the goals and the business dreams that we have. It's like it's like little gnats and mosquitoes. Like I'm trying to fish and enjoy the day, but you know you're just always being distracted by these little bitty things. That you you know that's what you've got to just you know worry about that, get it out of the way, and focus on what it is that you need because what most people really don't make a big change in their life until something drastic happens. They get laid off, they get fired to death, uh, you know, something, if a house burns down, something major, it will make you take action and move in a different direction. And, it, but we get comfort. We, and we talked about this earlier before we, we pushed record is like comfort kills, you know, stay away from being comfortable. Uh, Cause when you're comfortable, you're not going to, you know, move, you're not going to do something different. You're just okay with it. And that's probably one of the worst places to be in, in the world is like, you've, you know, like Les says, you've got to be hungry, you, you know, stay hungry. And uh, so that's the whole mental martial arts is really not let someone else program you. Don't let someone else paint your pictures. And that's what we do as sales guys. That's what you do with your videos. When people meet you online, they go, oh man, Terry, electrician out there in these streets, you know, getting that money. And like, they already know you, you're already, and you're not doing it because you're trying to sell them. You're building that relationship with them, but you're mm -hmm. teaching them, you're painting the pictures and, and the movies. So by the time they call Terry, the electrician, they're not talking about the price. They're talking about when can you come over here and do it? Mm-hmm. You, 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 all the other stuff has already been done. Yet, if it's out of the blue, cold, they don't know anything about some electrician that they called out of the phone book way back when. You know, and he starts rattling off numbers, this and that, and they're like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" He's like, "He's like, you gotta build that relationship first. You know, we do friend, we do business with people we know, like, and trust, and our friends and stuff. And that's what you're doing with these videos, and even right now with these podcasts, and being able to help other contractors because." These contractors watching this video, they don't need to reinvent the wheel. Man, send you an email, call you up, and shave 20 years off of the training. Like, that, like, you, like you said, you already been through the trenches. It's like, dude, don't go through the trenches again. I already went there. Yeah. Let, me, let me save you you know, a couple of hundred thousand dollars in, in 10 years of your life. I know, that's right. And, 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 and some gray hair. Yeah, some gray hair. <laughs> yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. That's that's the mental martial arts part of it. Uh, so is that program still available? Do you have that for sale anywhere online or? I've got a lot of personal development stuff uh, in the back office of my uh, master your business program because it, it's, it's uh, I call it the personal development part, the CDs and stuff that they got to watch and, and the, some downloads. And there's a, tw we do a 21 day mental diet of keeping track of every 15 minutes. I They're writing in a journal of, what the last 15 minutes was, what, what thoughts that they had, what conversations they had, what they heard on the radio is I want to, I want them to stay in the, in, in a state of awareness for 21 days. It's real, almost impossible to do, but you realize what you're doing, what you're eating, what you're thinking, where you're spending money at, what you're listening to on the radio. Every 15 minutes you're writing down and looking back and it's like, and you'll go a couple of hours and go, oh shit, I was supposed to write. But then you it makes you think, okay, man, what 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 would I do those last two hours? Because you can usually ask someone, hey man, what you do yesterday? What you think about? What you talk about? What you and they don't have a clue. And so if, if you're not programming yourself, someone's programming you. Absolutely. And, and I think you 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 just said it 10 minutes ago about is the best thing about owning your own business is you get to design who you want to work for. You get to design what you want your business to be like, good, bad, or ugly. You get to, but you should be the one designing it. Don't let don't let someone else design it. And if you don't exactly. take the time to design it, someone else will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Exactly. Um, there was one thing that popped up in my head that you were talking. Um, wow. And it's, it has left me just that quick. <laughs> But it goes back to the whole mental martial arts thing and, and, and oh, yeah, the mindfulness piece. Back yeah. in 2012, I used to teach meditation, mindfulness, and, and uh, um, creative visualization. Mm -hmm. um, and what you were just talking about with the 12, 21 day focus thing, that's, that's mindfulness. That's, that's yeah. actually paying attention. And, and living in the moment. Living in the moment, exactly. That's a reason. When I be posting these pictures of the food on, yeah. on uh, it's, I don't just do that just to show people what I'm eating. Yeah. There's, there's, some, there's another reason why. Because I'm enjoying that food in the moment. In the moment. I enjoy every bite, every morsel. When, I, when I'm sitting there eating that food, I'm sitting there just, it's, it's, it's an experience. Yeah. Good it's for like, you, brother. It's like I've had it for the first time. Yeah. You know, even though I, I, you know, I'll go and get that catfish on a regular basis. Yeah. But like this, like last Friday, I went and got that catfish and I was sitting here eating it and I was like, oh my God, this is the best thing yeah. ever. Yeah. And yeah. I intentionally focus and zone in on that experience of what that food is because life it's just a series of moments. Yeah. And, you know, we out here in the day-to-day, -day, we miss these things, man. Yeah, yep, yep. And, and I'm glad you bring up the food thing because uh, it stress is, for me, is like, and I teach, is like stress is the number one cause of all sickness and disease. And that's why I hate what's going on right now is because the stress that they're, the media is putting people in is doing more harm than anything else, period. Uh, and mm -hmm. the same is like, uh, I try to eat somewhat healthy, but at the same time, I don't stress about it because you can do your body more harm, always stress about, is this the right amount of calories? Is this the right this? Is this the right gluten? Or All of that is to where the acid that builds up and what your brain is going through, all of that is more harmful than the food that you're even putting in your body. To what so many people don't understand, it's it's the, the thought process and the emotional uh, state that you're in when you eat is just as important, if not more important than what you eat. Like you just said, you sit there and you're, you're, you're savoring it, you're enjoying it. And when you, and uh, like Steven Seagal for good, bad or ugly, whether you like him or not, I love the guy, I know a lot about him, but uh, is the Japanese religion or whatever the hell that they did, they, there's a whole, before they eat and he's lost track of all of it, but there's a whole mental state that they get into to, to, to prepare their body and their mind for the food that they're about to eat. And we do it as Christians. You're supposed to sit down and before you eat, you're supposed to give thanks and everything that you, and if you really did that and you really were thankful and you weren't just going through the motions of, Oh Lord, do you just think it is? And like, like we, like we all do. I mean, I'm not pointing fingers at anybody else pointing them at myself, but if you really took the time to do what you just said, is to sit down and look at it and think, and you're really saying thanks to wherever. It's like, man, I'm getting ready to enjoy this. And you're, it's like to where your body can really absorb it in a good, uh, and get all the nourishment from it. And you, it's just, it, it just nourishes your body. It nourishes your soul versus, I don't care how great the food is health wise. If you're arguing with the my wife or you're mad or some dude didn't pay you or you've been up straight and well, at least I'm eating healthy. It's like, your body ain't getting nothing from that. You know, all it is is you're feeding yourself poison no matter how good you think the food is. I hope that makes sense to anybody watching this. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and then, you know, I said catfish. And I know there's some people out there going to say, catfish, all oh, there's scavengers, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, they, they taste delicious. Okay? They taste delicious. They are delicious. If, they, if they're battered right. <laughs> <laughs> they, <know. laughs> they are quite delicious. So, yeah, you know. yeah. Anyway, yeah, but, uh, yeah, man, uh, this has been a blast, man. I got I actually got a class uh, with another one of my coaches uh, at 8.30. Good man. Well, 8.30 Good over man. the East Coast. I know you're on the you're yep. on the West Coast, so it's yep. just five coming up on 5.30 where you're at. <laughs> and now you got me wishing I had some damn good catfish. Uh, I got it. I got I got a text message from one of my buddies. Uh, and you've seen me. Uh, I, I camp with him. Big old huge black dude. Uh, but we've known each other forever, but he brings his deep fryers and he does, man, he batters these things up and he does the catfish right. I mean, it's like, so when I eat it, I'm, I'm eating it with him because he knows how to make it right. Uh, we've all been hanging out together, but 
uh, and I play golf every Friday. I've, I've been playing golf for probably since 2000, 2001 uh, with the same guys. And it's, it's my instructors in martial arts. And they're 77, 78. Uh, man, they drink hard whiskey all the time. By the ninth hole, doesn't matter what time we start. It could be 10 o'clock. If we get to the ninth hole, they're drinking beer. Uh, I'll have one every now and then. But they eat what they want. But they're in great like they're still healthy and active. And uh, my instructor's instructor, my instructor, Carlos Bunda is 84 and he still hits the ball further than me and talks shit. And I'm like, wow. dude, you've been, I'm like, dude, you've been playing longer. Come on. <laughs> and, but, uh, and, and, and you were, you were Taekwondo and you, you were saying it in Korea. Uh, Chuck Norris was uh Tang Sudo. Uh, Tang Sudo from, yeah. yeah. From Korea. Yeah. You know, he, he, when he was in the, you know, over there, in, with the Korean War, but my I got a good friend who's a fourth degree black belt in Tang Sudo. So, yeah, and so, uh, and as Chuck, as much as I love him, as great as he is, uh, my instructor is the only person to ever beat Chuck Norris twice in competition. Uh, wow. Okay. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, but and in, in, in Bruce, he was supposed to fight Bruce Lee, and Bruce Lee wouldn't fight him. But they all grew up in the '60s together here in the Hollywood, LA, and to sit around, man, and and, and hear all of them tell stories is just. Oh it's no. Just, doubt. I've, I've just been blessed, uh, and and like you said, with the food, I don't take any of it for granted. None of it. I mean, if I died ten years ago, I would have lived, you know, a hundred times more than I ever thought I would have, you know, lived uh, growing up this little redneck kid in, in a trailer park in North Carolina. Uh, construction took me to Mexico City three different times. I've seen the pyramids, the pool fights, uh, I, stuff I'd never do. People I've met because of construction, I would have never met. It's just, it's a great trade. And, and I hope we bring it back and get some of this, the youth involved the way it should be. It's a, it's just, it's a great way to build your self-esteem. It's a great way to build your bank account. It's a great company and to, uh, to launch for yourself. And I'm glad that guys like you are out there, you know, and, and passing on some of this knowledge before we, uh, you know, you know, leave this place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm honored to be here with you and, and I'm just proud of everything that you're doing. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be, you know, uh, one of your students, man, because, you know, the whole Google My Business, you really got me, you know, I had got on there and just kind of like, yeah, whatever. And you just really got me to focus on really, you know, getting, digging into that, that right there. I, I, I get phone calls, multiple phone calls daily from Google My Business. The whole video of yeah. doing the, you know, video, getting the testimonials. Yeah. When I seen and, that video testimonial and afters. Yeah, I seen that video testimonial, I think it was yesterday, of like you said, that screw was, and, and you've got like several of them now, but uh, yeah. I love seeing those. Man, well, I love seeing you're those. You're the reason why I'm, do why I'm yeah. doing them, because I never thought about <laughs> doing them in video like that yeah. before, you know, and, and just getting people on the spot to do video. Like yesterday when I was like, yo, I was like, Justin, I said, I said all that's left there is the video testimony. He was like, so you what you want me to do it and then send it to you? I'm like, no, I want you to do it right now. Do it right now, yeah. Like, and uh, you, you know really? why we, like... you, you know why I do them and why I did when, when I got back into construction, I had already been doing them because of Les. Uh, I've okay. got one. Me and Les is, you know, Les is going. You know, I'm standing there. He's up. I'm with my baby boy, Pride and Joy. I'm Les Brown. Mimi's uh, mama's. In, I'm standing here with my. It's like, but he did a whole video testimonial with me, and then and he taught me. He's like, no man. He's like, uh, and back then we had little camcorders and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And, and at the end of seminars and stuff, he would make, you know, he would make me go get people out of the audience to do testimonials with me and stuff. So when I got back into construction, my wife said, well, why'd you stop doing that? Have your homeowners do And I'm like, the wife tells me all kinds of, she's the one who made me start charging for estimates and all this other stuff. But she'd show up with her little you know, eight millimeter camera and do this. And, and it just, you know, by then, when I got back into construction, the internet was there, YouTube was here, but uh, Google hadn't bought them yet. And uh, it just, I tell people now, it's like, it's, it's a thousand times easier to build a business now than it was back in the early nineties when I started late eighties. Yep. Yeah. Crazy. And, and, yep. and most contractors aren't taking advantage of it. It's just, it's, it's mine. Oh, I know. Of course not. I know they're yeah. not, you know, yeah. like, like I said, I got a whole YouTube channel for the, for the, for the business, for smart wire. Uh, and, and I've been slacking. You know, yeah. I, have to, I have to admit, I've been slacking. It's a, of, but it's a lot of work, though, Brad. It's a lot of it work. It is. Though. It is. Yeah. But it pays, man. It pays yeah. in spades. It yeah. really does. Yeah. Yeah. I focus primarily on Facebook because that's where I spend most of my time as far as social media goes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm expanding out more into YouTube. And I'm still trying to get into Instagram. Uh, I don't TikTok and I don't Snapchat. Yeah. And I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
sorry, brother. <laughs> but uh, you know, I'm uh I'm I'm loving this, man. We're gonna have to do this again. We're definitely yeah. gonna have to do this again because well, we can talk you. for days on this stuff. You know, we uh hopefully in April we'll do one live from that catfish place. Oh, that's I, I, I should be in Atlanta, so uh, okay, we'll, we'll okay. Get together, we'll get together when you're. Oh, I definitely got. Comes. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna have to take you to get some of that catfish, and they only yeah. have it on Friday, so all right, man, just keep that in it. mind. So whenever yep. you hear that Friday, that when that Friday, yeah. we're gonna go over there and get some of that good catfish because, uh, man, that's yeah, that's my favorite thing. But all I got right, a couple, bro. I got a couple little spots around town where they got some real good eating, as we say. I see it. I see it. <laughs> So I'm gonna put a link. You said I'm gonna put a. Uh, I'm gonna get a link from you and put it in the description for the program for your master my business master right. my business program. So Appreciate people can it. check that out. You know, you know, if they wanna, if they wanna take this thing up another level, if they really wanna have a business instead of owning a job, then you wanna look up my man Brian and just you know just do the damn thing because there's levels to this. Yeah, there's levels to this, and and, and I be going through some of the, some of those levels in other videos and podcasts, but just know there's levels to this, and whatever level you're on, you don't have to stay there unless you want to. Yes, sir. With that being said, man, we're going to say, I appreciate you, Brian, for coming on. Like I said, we're going to have to do it again real soon, and uh, if all hearts and minds are clear, we out. Deuces. <laughs>